know what I mean? So, I think all that's bad. for the uh, pledge and the invocation and remain standing, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, I would just like to take this moment, as we all know that today is Pearl Harbor Day, this is a ship that I served on, the USS Boston, guided missile cruiser, flagship for Rear Admiral Hall. After the invocation, I would like to ask the mayor that we dedicate this common council meeting for all those that served in Pearl Harbor. Mayor, I'll leave that up to you after the invocation. Let us, not only today, but every day, honor the veterans who served their country who exposed themselves to the risk in military service, who put our country above self when our way of life was threatened, who have borne America's battles, who have defended the borders of freedom, who have protected our nation's security in war and peace, who have risked and given their lives for causes they believe in, especially freedom and democracy, Every time our young men and women march off to war, they were America's young heroes, the pride of our nation. And every time when the guns fall silent, memories of their sacrifice and contributions grew too soon dim. Let us remember the heroic sacrifices, the, the horrors of war, the thousands of men and women who suffered and died. Let us not forget the sacrifices of our veterans and the price they paid for us. Let us show gratitude to those who served when freedom was challenged. Let us also remember their families and children. God bless all, and thank you, veterans. Amen. Amen. I would like to take this time to observe a moment of silence to honor the memory of our brave servicemen who died in the attack on Pearl Harbor 58 years ago today. Thank you. Court call the roll. Mayor Stafford. Here. Alderman Lincoln. Here. Alderman Sahaska. Here. Alderman Weston. Here. Alderman Sherman. Here. Alderman Thompson. Here. Alderman Woodward. Here. City Attorney Hawthorne. Here. All present, Your Honor. Thank you. First item on the agenda tonight <coughs> is a Y2K informational forum. There's been an awful lot of talk and an awful lot of work done in regards to potential problems that may occur due to the Y2K uh, 
bug, whatever you want to call it, happening. And tonight we have a number of people here that are going to represent not only some of our city departments, but also Niagara Mohawk and Altel and the Red Cross and Fulton Savings Bank and the hospital just to uh, let you know what has been done to prepare for the Y2K. We're going to have to, we're, we're going to change from our schedule a little bit. Altel is asked to go first because they have equipment here that is noisy a little bit and they will be able to get it out of here once they get done. So, first on the agenda will be Altel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank you for having the opportunity to come out and speak tonight. I'm John Hill, I'm the new area manager here for Altel and Fulton. Um, I haven't had a chance to meet everyone in town, but I look forward to meeting everybody in this upcoming year. I'd like to talk to uh, you all about this evening three things. What our corporation has done to prepare us for the Y2K transition, what we're doing here locally through the actual hours of the transition, and then what you, the customer, can do to help us through the transition. Okay? Okay. Let me back up a little bit. Okay, my computer has a mind of its own right now. Bear with me. And it's not even the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> I think we feel comfortable, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> okay. The year 2000 project has been a top priority for Altel. Um, Altel provides wireless and wireless communications uh, throughout the United States. Um, we serve nearly 8 million customers in 25 states. Uh, so we, we only have 50 some thousand access lines out of the Fulton office, but we're uh, responsible for about 8 million customers. So you're part of a huge uh, family of customers for us. We have about 24,000 employees throughout the world. Altel established a company-wide uh, year 2000 program with offices in each business division. We have wireless division, wireline, which you're all customers of that division, and also information services. And that division gets into banking, some real critical uh, software as well. So it's part of a, a network of three divisions. The total cost for the 2000 effort for our company is $80 million. And as of June uh, 30th, this past summer, we'd already spent 67 uh, million, you know, in the process of getting ready for this transition. So it's big bucks, and, it, and it's been high priority. Uh, they've had monthly reviews with senior management to see if we're on track, see if uh, test conversions have gone appropriately, and they have. Uh, and quarterly progress reviews with the board of directors to make sure that uh, they're comfortable with it. Uh, contingency planning uh, to maintain and restore <coughs> communication services in the event of a national d disaster, power failure, um, software-related interruptions is part of our everyday process. Every night, the system that provides dial tone to you is, has some type of an upgrade or a patch to it. So there's always these contingency plans in place. Obviously, this one's the biggest one we've ever had, but um, it's, uh, it's part of our business. Uh, Locally here, we will have uh, all of our central offices, which are the buildings that provide the dial tone, manned. Okay, so we'll have technicians on site, and they've got a regiment of tests that they're going to be doing through the conversion. Hours. We'll also have a, what we're going to call a war room, where uh, management and craft will be working together, and um, we'll be in there from 10 to 2 during the critical hours over the New Year, um, New Year's. And I've got listed in the handout a war room uh, phone number. If you're in a critical situation in your uh, emergency services, um, all of our um, emergency services and, and top customers as far as business customers that are going to be working through that hour, they'll have access to that number. 
Um, if you have a problem at your residence, we still will ask you to use the um, 800 numbers to our repair centers because they're also going to be heavily staffed during a transition. Uh, as I said, contingency planning is not a new process. It's, we have divisions that are just devoted to that uh, transition. Um, Customer service are addressed every day, and maybe some of you have experienced customer service problems or hopefully uh, new installations through our mega call centers that, that handle uh, the, all the customers throughout the 25 states. Increased staffing again, not only here, but at our major centers. Uh, that's, that's a must, everybody's been put on alert. Um, in fact, our computer person, I think, George, when do you start on? You're, uh, you're going to be on call for about four days before and four days after, so we're not going to be partying too hard on, on New Year's Eve. We also sell a lot of equipment to uh, big customers, um, and we've done a lot of work with the vendors to make sure that the equipment that we've sold uh, businesses is compatible, as well as any of the equipment that we've sold to residential <laughs> customers. Um, and they also all have their contingency plans, Nortel's the biggest vendor that we sell. A lot of the phones and the businesses you see, that's a Nortel product, and they've got just as big or bigger uh, 2,000 contingency plan um, than we do. Now here's the thing that we can do as customers, and this is the biggest thing really. Uh, all the experts have analyzed this, but the most potential for a problem during this transition is going to be the urge to pick up the phone at 12.01 and call your friends, family, or get online with your computer, which still is exactly the same circuit networking problem is because you're using up that data path or dial tone path that uh, the system relies on. And what uh, is a po potential problem is this system's overloaded. We're not provisioned to provide everybody in every street and every home to be on the phone at the same time. It's just not feasible. So during a uh, crisis, uh, uh, we see a real influx of, of calls, obviously, and that can blip the system. Well, this is the biggest time that we've ever had where people are going to see, does my phone work? Is my network up? Can I call my business? And what we're asking people to do is uh, minimize the use during this transition time. If you're going to call uh, friends or family, please do it before or wait till the day after New Year's. Um, kind of make those plans ahead of time. Especially overseas calls, that's going to be, we, we can't rely on um, other countries to be compatible. We feel pretty strongly here, but you're going to um, have a potential there for uh, problems. So you might want to make those earlier or later. Um, if you do encounter problems, hang up, wait a few minutes, try again. I would, I stress, don't panic. Um, there's a, uh, there's probably just a lot of people on the phone or on the internet. Some other tips, if you have cordless phones at the house or uh, phones that have built-in um, answering machines, those rely on AC power, commercial power, and, and NIMO's here to speak about their contingency plan. Our dial tone is provided to you on DC power. What that means is if the AC commercial power goes down, we have generators that are fully loaded with uh, plenty of fuel and they're ready to go. If there is a major power outage like you experience during a normal storm, your phone works, correct? Now if you're relying on that extra source for your uh, answering machines or, or cordless phones, then it won't work. So it's really important to at least have one phone that is related uh, or directly uh, hooked to our DC uh, phone line, okay? That's the biggest thing you could do. Um, and then if you have cell phones, obviously make sure you're all powered up and uh, batteries are charged. <coughs> what I've listed here, and it's in the handout, are a series of, of web pages that you can go to from Altels to Netscape. It's kind of their uh, 2,000 contingency uh, web pages that can really answer just about every question you'd ever, ever have. And also, uh, we've provided the inside line, which is a user, customer user pamphlet. We've got plenty here on the, on the desk. The address is a lot of things that I've spoke of this evening and also with some other helpful tips and information through the 2000 conversion. Okay. Are we going to we're take questions at the end once everybody has a chance to speak? Yes. Ev once everybody has had a chance to make a presentation, then we're going to open it up for questions. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Next, we're going to have Niagara Mohawk. I 
wish I would have known he was going to have his laptop here tonight. My laptop crapped out this afternoon. <laughs> so I'm using overheads and uh, I'm putting Scott to work here to help me out. Uh, I'm Tim Murphy, area business manager for Niagara Mohawk. We're real happy to be here tonight to talk to you about your, uh, your forum. Is this on? Yeah. May have to get closer to it. I don't know. Test. <laughs> I always like to start out with a joke. So Y two K is it a simple answer? And my youngest child actually came up to me and said, "Dad, you know, if the computers are going to go crazy on January first, why don't we just unplug them and turn them back on on January second? Uh, we wish that was the case." It's not. Uh, Bill Gates, I think everyone's heard of Bill. He had this great quote, and we believe him to be right. Some countries will have more problems than others with the arrival of the year 2000, but for most of us, it will only be a minor inconvenience. And uh, I think that's what we're going to try to do here tonight is convince you that, in fact, we are ready. For Niagara Mohawk, we've spent four years and uh, about 30, 30 million dollars, so all tells outspent us almost two to one. Uh, our IT people started working on this in 1996. In 1997, we formed an interdepartmental tax, task form, uh, force, headed by a vice president and reporting directly to the president of the company. We adopted all industry guidelines and implemented all regulatory mandates. We had a very comprehensive uh, six-phase process, inventory, assessment, remediation, validation and testing, acceptance and deployment, and contingency planning. This is key to uh, our distribution and transmission. We inventoried 948 substations, all generating plants, all natural gas regulator and gate stations, and more for devices with computer chips and microprocessors. We put all that information into a central database. All that information was reviewed by our own Niagara Mohawk experts, and that inventory process was completed back in 1998. For assessment and remediation, we are happy to find out that no Y2K problems were found in either the electric or the natural gas transmission system. That's a key point. Uh, we have no problems with our distribution, either with our electric or natural gas. We did, however, have to upgrade some energy management systems. Those were primarily uh, systems that monitor gas flow at our, our gate stations and we had to upgrade some generating plant control systems. And those are systems at a regional control center that actually help us to access uh, uh, stations where we can do some relay changes uh, remotely. Out of 15,000 items that were surveyed, only 900 had to be repaired. That's less than 6%. Once those items were repaired, they had to go through a validation and testing procedure. We tested devices, systems, and applications that were non-compliant. We also tested several devices, even if they were certified by the manufacturer. Uh, and during, this, uh, during the project, we were able to establish a state-of-the-art integrated testing laboratory for computer applications. Contingency planning, uh, you know, I tried to cut this down to five minutes and I could have spent probably 15 minutes on our contingency planning. Basically, it's a look at Murphy's Law. If anything can go wrong, it will. We took everything that could, that could go wrong, wrote the scenario out, and then tried to uh, put a plan of attack against it. One of the things that we've done is we've arranged to the New York uh, State Independent System Operator, formerly known as New York Power Pool, for 25% more reserve power than will be needed. That's in addition to the 18% that we're mandated to have. So it's 43% extra power that will be on reserve. And when I say on reserve, we actually purchase power from Ontario Hydro, Quebec Hydro, Pennsylvania, uh, surrounding states, let alone what we, uh, what we produce here in New York State. The same with natural gas. We'll have additional supply of natural gas stored in depleted gas wells and salt domes uh, located nearby border states. Those are primarily down Pennsylvania. Where are we at right now? Each phase is 100% complete. We're not in the two minute warning. We're not nervous about this. We're very, very sure that our systems are going to work properly. 
We do have a high degree of confidence in our key suppliers based on the information, the efforts that, uh, that they've communicated with us. Some of them are here tonight, uh, natural gas suppliers. We actually purchase our gas through uh, three large companies, uh, CNG is one of them. Uh, communication network operators like, uh, like Altel, uh, other generating companies that I spoke of, and independent power producers, and key suppliers for any of our mission critical systems. Y2K has had our highest priority. We've devoted all the necessary resources to deal with it. We successfully performed a company-wide drill on September 8th and 9th, where we tested all of our communications, uh, our radio communications, to make sure that they would work. Uh, however, you know, our goal is really to make the transition to the year 2000 seamless for the customer. But we cannot guarantee continuity of service. Uh, I think if I was to start first and say, Mike, don't worry, we're going to have power. Everybody can go home. We'd all be happy. But uh, you may have a storm. You might have a tree come down. You might have an auto accident. All these things can happen. And our fear as well is really that there could be uh, just a, a standard outage that we have to deal with. And uh, people are going to think that that's Y2K related. In fact, if you've read the paper, there was a situation at the Carousel Mall where that was the first idea that it was Y2K related, when in fact it was purely mechanical, there was a lot of moisture and a, a switch gear there that caused the problem. To help you plan for a power outage, especially uh, those at home, place working flashlights around your home, have a battery operated radio with extra batteries, store non-perishable canned dry foods or paper products and a can opener, and some extra drinking water, and this number, if we can leave this up here for a second, this is our power outage number that can be used anytime, 24 hours a day, right throughout the year. Uh, it's not our customer service number, it's a number specifically designed for power outages. We had a lot of complaints and people who had a power outage and couldn't get through to customer service, so we set up this number. It's 1-800-867-5222. One eight hundred eight six seven five two two two, and again, that's that's a good number year round. A couple of tips to help you if, in fact, there is a power outage, or regardless of the of the cause. You want to turn off your major appliances, and major appliances today are probably uh, your computers as well, so that when the power is turned back on, you don't blow fuses and you don't uh, pop your circuit breakers. Keep your refrigerator and freezer doors shut. Food will keep from 12 to 24 hours. Burn only wood or newspapers in your fireplace and add alternate fuels. And call Niagara Mohawk if your service to the neighborhood has been turned on, but uh, your house is still down. There might be a problem with your house in particular. We'll have to send a service man out and try to help you with that. Some of these things we really learned with the ice storm up north. and uh, uh, There was a lot of mistakes the customers were making because they really weren't prepared for, for that type of an outage. Where will we be on 1231? We're going to have 10 times the normal employees working that evening. We're going to have 1,000 Niagara Mohawk employees working at uh, various locations. Line crews will be stationed at local service centers for quick response. We will have line crews here at the Valley Service Center to serve Oswego County. We have radio equipped technicians with, uh, with, that will be stationed to key electric transmission natural gas facilities. The idea there is that if we lose communication links through uh, the telephone service, that we'll be able to communicate with each other. And we'll have increased staffing at our customer service center located in Syracuse. Our emergency information center was put together specifically for Y2K. This is, uh, this is really a big deal. It's our direct contact with the independent system operator. It'll be our communication link to the federal, the state, and the county emergency management offices throughout the state, throughout our, our territory. And we'll have trained Niagara Mohawk staff on site at the county emergency management offices, and we will have an individual here in Fulton at the Oswego County uh, Department. Uh, in fact, we went down and tested our radios over there, and because that was down in the basement, we had to install an additional radio to make our radios work there. So, Key events. We're going to monitor the, uh, the status of other utilities outside of the United States as they experience the event. 
The first major city to celebrate New Year's is Auckland, New Zealand. That's at 7 a.m. and 12.31. And if you're interested in following this, there's gonna be a lot of information either in our hotline, which I'll get to, or on the internet. Uh, systems that are very similar to Niagara Mohawk system are in New Zealand, Israel, United Kingdom, so we're really going to be following what's happening in those areas. We do have con some concerns for third world countries. The uh, uh, country of Russia, we believe, may have some problems. They just haven't had the resources to get into this the way other countries have. We've got, uh, Mike, when we met with you uh, a couple of months ago, we told you we were going to have a hotline number. Uh, we've just set that up. This is a Y2K customer hotline number, 1-877-852-1612. That'll be available from 7 a.m. and 1231 through January 1st. Customers calling this number will receive a timely information via a frequently updated recorded message. And any public announcement will also be made over that hotline. Finally, for more information, if anybody wanted to get on our website, uh, it's a very comprehensive website. Uh, there's a lot of comprehensive information on the website regarding Y2K. www.niagaramohawk.com, that was just changed from nimo.com. And uh, as with the hotline, the website will be regularly updated, include all public announcements. Uh, how'd I do, John? Did I get it under five minutes? Probably not. Not bad. <laughs> okay. But it was a very good presentation. Thank you. Um, just one other thing, if I may. I brought this uh, Y2K in your Niagara Mohawk service booklet. I think I've got a copy for pretty much anyone in the room. Take one. Okay. Thank you very much. Next, we are going to have uh, Chief Mark Spawn from the uh, Fulton Police Department. No visuals here, and no 30 million spent either. <laughs> um, Boy, am I glad to hear that. I'm sure you are. Uh, the police department has conducted a Y2K assessment of its operations, just as several other agencies have done to ensure that our computers and operating systems will also function after January 1st, 2000. But the January 1 date changeover has presented a variety of public safety issues to law enforcement. We've reviewed these issues and we've taken actions to ensure that we are Y2K compliant in those respects. Uh, we have already obtained compliance certifications for our computers, police vehicles, and communications equipment, including the 911 system. We have requested Y2K compliance certifications from a variety of other providers as well. This has been done in order to determine if there would be any negative impact as a result of the year 2000 date change. Generally speaking, we have been told that our equipment is Y2K compliant. However, there are certain factors that would have an adverse effect on public safety. Those include the catastrophic loss of pub public utilities, particularly power and telephone service. A loss of these services would likely affect other systems in the community, even Y2K compliant equipment. For instance, even though our traffic signals are Y2K compliant, if there is a loss of power, they simply will not work. From speaking with Niagara Mohawk and all tall providers, and as you've heard here tonight, the loss of power and telephone service due to a Y2K problem is remote. However, we have made contingency plans for such an event nonetheless. Our plans in general consist of a coordinated patrol plan with the fire department, as well as a backup communications plan. As usual, we'll be mobile on New Year's Eve and throughout the morning on January 1st to assess any effects of the date change. We will have additional personnel on duty, and we have developed a call-in procedure in case 